Thank you. You know what we, we know what we used to do too, and we're not as good as this as we used to be. We used to let people matriculate in a little, you know, like give them a few because we would just start talking. We, we still do that now. We just start talking. Just hit There's them. Nobody. Well, and then people get in after like a minute or two, and they're like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Um, <laughs> this might be my my L for the day. I had. I guess I have one pending for tomorrow, but. I'm riding uh, undefeated day from the stuff I originated, at least, with the, the Colts and the, the Lions and the one over. And then, obviously, any teaser I touched. And God bless you guys. You guys love long teasers, too. All the teasers were good as gold this week so far. Uh, pretty happy with that. Obviously, uh, I guess the Patriots would have fallen into one. For some reason, I didn't add them to any because it was like a game I'd already bet straight up and plus three. And uh, kind of the same thing with the Colts. I could have put the Colts in some teasers as well. And it's like, I did a little bit, but it's like, I already bet this one. I don't like adding all that extra liability on one team. How's your, how'd your day betting going today, Connor? Yeah, it could have been awesome. We had, I mostly focus on player props. And so props were like five and one in the early slate. And then the, the late slate, we had Cortland Sutton under 51 and a half yards. He had zero yards in the first half. 17 yards going into the fourth quarter and then caught like four or five balls including one with three seconds left to put us in the grave so that was brutal um but obviously still a good day and then i won i had some some bonus bets i'm sure you saw some of those on twitter uh you know through the various uh, ways that one gets bonus yeah, look, bets. we uh, didn't get there with uh with our guy uh herbert yeah we didn't get to 325 plus but i did put a little bit on Bijan to lead the league in rushing this week so that's live at 30 to 1 he's at 124 beat james cook by a yard so there we we'll go see. yeah no so yeah connor is filling in our friend at four for four prop drop on fridays you guys should check that out if you need a link to the four for four channel that is it's at the bottom of our youtube channel you can get to that you should follow them as well um, they do a couple shows every week. We can watch them if you need extra football content. Obviously, Drew will be back for the Wednesday show. Um, it's going to be at a weird time, though, because he's in the middle of Croatia, and the time change is uh, obviously like seven hours difference for me ahead rather than behind in California. Uh, looking at the second half line, Patriots minus two and a half, under 23. I kind of lean. Oof. I kind of lean under, but there's not a lot of room there. I was hoping for a 24. I hadn't been watching the live lines. I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on what's going on with this uh, Patriots offense? Yeah, this is kind of tough here because they've looked pretty bad. I think that this is a good bounce back spot for Vic Fangio's defense after last week's poor showing. It's the Chargers where they just got like bullied basically all game on the ground. Um, so they're playing a lot better here. But I kind of think that the over could be interesting here with the Dolphins because, I mean, they've had four drives and they scored on three of them pretty easily. One was like kind of a quick three and out. So I don't know. I'm, I'm interested in them kind of keeping pace here. And I think the Patriots proved last week that they're able to kind of maintain pace, throw the ball. I mean, the, the, the Dolphins are going to kind of sit back, I think, after a while and just let Mac Jones like pick them apart underneath. So whenever that comes, I think we'll see plenty of yards and points. It's just might be after Miami's up by more than two touchdowns. So. Apparently a berry horse took the under as four people in the chat well, just said. There so. you go. Then the yeah, under is probably the sharp move, huh? If they have, if there's some, uh, if there, if anyone likes the over, there's probably going to be a little action that pushes it down. It is now. It just moved oh, big time on DraftKings. Yeah, minus one fifteen to the under twenty three. I don't know. Make who started with the ball. This is something I'm just. I've been horrible at. I need to. I need to be better at remembering. I feel like. We I thought New England started, no? New England. So Dolphins get the ball. Like, I'm kind of tempted. 21 and a half now. God, you guys, you guys, if you guys are fast on these, Animals. you could probably find some middles. Um, New England started the ball. Miami will get the ball in the second half. I. So what do you do with when you have a lead, Connor? What, what kind of plays do you call with a lead? I mean, you normally run the ball, but you, I feel, like, you run I feel the ball. like the Dolphins just do whatever they want, you know? Well, even even when they're running the ball, so they – and the, the even the announcers did a great job of this. They were explaining, you know, they're running this three high safeties. They're leaving, uh, you know, a third safety out there. None of these guys are in the box. 
They're kind of just taking, it's like the no doubles defense, taking away that deep shot, making sure Tyreek doesn't beat him over the top. They watched last week's film. They don't want that. I know Bill is a good, you know, defensive mind. And so is, you know, little Bill there, Steve, not little, little Bill's a cartoon. <laughs> little Bill. A uh, little bit, but, uh, <laughs> Also a character in Boogie Nights. I digress. I, I like the halftime adjustments you usually get from this Patriots team, but at the same time, I really think McDaniel does McDaniel does a nice job of that as well. And if they continue to go with this, you know, this two high shell, three high, they're just and they, and they said like, hey, we have a what seventeen to three lead. We're just going to run the ball. Most are, you saw what happens when most runs the ball. They're not, you know, they're not able to even get a body on him before he's two three yards past the line of scrimmage. They're averaging. I don't know what they are per per play, but I, I'd love to see what the running stats are. Like I'm, I'm saying I might just bet. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting in a Polish middle here. I can get it. Well, whatever. <laughs> I, you, you can't if you're going to do a halftime show and make a halftime bet. You can't worry about the bets you made pregame. I always yell at Drew for that, but yeah, they're, you can't. They're you can't do that. Four 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 yards per rush right now to New England's two point three yards per play seven to three point six. And even if they get, you know, less than aggressive, I, I think I'm going to just say, I think I'm just going to say I might take some Miami here. I'm going to split it up just because the total market got ruined by Kira in there. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to split up. I'm, I'm going to take a little two and a half and a little plus 140. Ooh. All right. Yeah. I don't, I don't mind that necessarily, but I don't know. I think Miami's probably just going to keep, keep churning here. Like, I mean, unless you think that the Patriots make significant adjustments here in the second half, but so far from what we've seen, basically, I mean, McDaniel had massive questions coming to last week, right? With the chargers shutting them down the previous season. And then he answered all those questions and more. Maybe some of that was Staley's doing just being a donkey, but you know, answered all that more. And then now coming to this, you know, hypothetically tough Patriots matchup still uh, is playing really well too. So. Yeah. With the, and with the secondary injuries, you know, both Joneses, hurt now i don't know if marcus went back in but now he's been shaken up twice mm -hmm. like yeah and that's the thing i don't think miami needs to keep their foot on the gas to win the second half i think they could they no. could go can, like honestly their game plan has been half conservative they've been you know doing the let's take what you're giving me i'll take all this underneath stuff like if you want me to turn into a west coast offense and just nickel and dime your ass if you're going to keep all your d-backs that deep we can do that we have guys everyone here Barrios, Waddle, Hill, they can all play that underneath slot role. Like all their receivers can do that. And uh, Mostert looks good when he's getting the ball as well. And even without Armstead, they're they're kind of looking pretty decent up front. So I don't yeah. know. I, we haven't seen a lot of pressure on Tua. And yeah, this is a good point from Jesus of all the guys to make a comment. So the guy with the, all the numbers, J JTG222999. I was like saying the name, you know, it's part of getting on screen. Um, but he says, yeah, like it doesn't feel like we're going to see a big play. They've gone deep a couple times, but every time that happens, we have this double coverage, the ball's out of bounds anyway. This isn't a bad look either. Miami team totals only 10. Oh yeah. That's nice. I never yeah. look at those Christ. Yeah. That's I, a good I one. Cause bets. yeah, I think if they're, if they're going to nickel and dime them, they'll still be successful. I like that one a lot. We're looking at live props right here. 290 for two. Oh, he has one eighty eight so far. The issue is I think they'll still probably just be successful. Oh yeah. This um, is, you know, you guys, this is the advantage here. We have actually a guy in a legal state now. Me and Drew, me and Drew have been, you know, Cali and Minnesota, no legal books. Like for the most part, the offshores don't have. Oh really? Um, live player props. Like Bovada has some stuff at halftime and it's not much. So the, I love these live player prop things because I almost I was like, shit, I should have somebody go bet Mostert for me. Guy's kind of ripping it off. He has nine for 40 and a touchdown already. Yeah, his, his live over under 74 and a half, a little bit of juice on the over here. So I guess we would need, what, a little bit more from him in the second half here. But, I mean, he probably got that. Ramondre's over under is down to 30 and a half. And he has 16 yards right now. I mean, are they going to run the ball in the second half? If they go down here because Miami gets in the second half, they score again. Like we're going to see Mac drop back like 30 more times probably in the second half. That's another reason. And it's probably another reason the over or the, excuse me, the under is a decent look. If they do abandon the run, 
Miami's been getting some good pressure. There's some banged up pieces. There's some pieces that maybe you aren't excited about having starting in the first place on this offensive line for the Patriots. And if they do sell out and just have to start abandoning the run altogether, like th- that pressure is just going to keep getting worse. So I guess have fun with that. Yeah, there's a, a Miami team total over 26 and a half for the whole game. It's minus 145, but I mean, you're talking about 10 points, wins it, nine, you know. I mean, you're getting the, the hook there even. So 10 points and you win it. Would you lay the juice yeah. on that though? And I feel like that's pretty juicy, but I, I kind of like, I'm not opposed to it. So the only thing that's keeping me from betting, betting very much on any of these is just, I did see a really good Patriots team in the second half against the Eagles. You know, that said the, I yeah. mean, and that's, that situation was not too dissimilar. That the only thing being was the Eagles got there by a little bit of getting lucky, you know that right. that sixteen nothing lead. So that that lead was a little fugazi. Like, I mean, they haven't looked that like, good this year in the, general. Whereas, like, you know, to say like, oh, they came back against the Eagles, like it's not like they were shit versus the Eagles. The Eagles got some lucky bounces, got some lucky scores early, and then didn't really look good after that. Whereas Miami is kind of dominating this right now. They, they're probably doubled up on yardage. They are, they are, it's two thirty seven to one sixteen. They have 15 first downs to eight. Uh, the total plays are almost equal without having really, you know, a long, what do you, what do you think the longest play they've had was that For Waddle Patriots? play, I suppose. No, the, the, yeah, Dolphins. Uh, my, it was Waddle, twenty-eight. Yeah, yeah, Waddles was twenty-eight. Craycraft had a twenty-two yarder. Barrios mm. had that eighteen yarder. It's not like they've had some fifty-yard bomb either yet. It's just been consistently churning, like you mentioned there. Um, if you do, uh, if you guys do want to get on the like, Patriots, kind of like catching catching up on here. And Mac Jones, twenty-seven and a half completions. He is already at fourteen. So, yeah, like I mean, yeah, born recep- reception second half. Let's see what that's at. I mean, I feel like that could be a good look too. Uh, you're a prop guy. Figure this out. Three and a half. Oh yeah, that's that's a great look. Um, I think the over on that one is is it, he already has one. So yeah, three more in the second half is no problem if they're throwing it like another twenty five plus times. Yeah, that's the only thing I was looking at is maybe like Mac um, attempts, but those are always. I mean, that's going to be juice tire. How many does he have right now? He's at eighteen, and the over under is thirty eight and a half. Yeah, I'm looking at thirty eight and a half minus thirty to the over. Give me, yep. give me this. Uh, give me the wide receivers receiving props. Where are yeah, you? Yeah, Bourne's been really quiet though because he he had a big game last week. Uh, you know, ran the most routes out of the receivers, but I mean, Jude, the whole Juju thing about him not being the most top five most talented receiver came out this week, and he's only has two for six now. Devontae Parker's leading them in catches, which is never a good sign. So. I'm struggling to find the team total. I did find it one place, but again, it was that I'd rather bet the nine or excuse me. I'd rather bet the 10 yeah. and pay minus minus one fifty for this. Uh, <laughs> so, and then we did mention this in the discord. If anyone who's watching this is in the discord, some of you are, I know for sure, but we're going to roll this right into the Sunday night podcast. So like with the second half starts here in a second, no overtime, no bullshitting around. We'll probably, I mean, I'll still be watching the game. I, when I do this, I'm watching the game, guys. But we'll we'll be recording that uh, the recap pod. We'll quick touch on both Monday night games. Any thoughts on that? And then uh, kind of spin into recap and then talk about early numbers. So I don't know about an hour. We'll try to beat the. We'll we'll try to be faster in the second half so we can watch the uh, you know, the Dolphins run the ball out when they're up 17, 17 uh, to three. It'd be funny if it just scoreless second half. Just, just zero, get real zero. conservative and play defense. <laughs> God, that'd be so boring here. We got uh, Charles Saul in the chat here said second half play is Dolphins Super Bowl futures. I have some divisional stuff. I don't have any Super Bowl futures though. Do you? Do you take anything on the Dolphins pre flop or no? I I had a. I had McDaniel listed as one of my guys who can win it, and I will say like quick awards recap there. Like McDaniel should be favored for Coach of the Year. Lafleur lost, um, Campbell lost. Your other, your other names that were near the top. Nobody like you know the. <laughs> we had this big price change in in Sean McVay. Like he's gonna win this award this year. Like, yeah, he would he would have needed today. Like today was the end of that. 
he needs to win the division to win that award. So, yeah, that's uh, that's gone. So, who's yeah. going to be the conspiracy guy with Drew Garner? <laughs> I'll try to fill in on that. So, are All you right, a conspiracy guy, Andy, or what? Oh, Drew, Drew does a conspiracy. So, <laughs> and again, this will be live during the game. Not going to hurt my feelings if you go watch the game instead. If you want to listen to this later, we're going to, Dan's going to release it as a podcast, but we're going to kill the halftime show, not actually go anywhere and just roll it, start the podcast. So, whatever Dan says, go. We'll get to that field goal. Oh, yeah. That was wild. I still can't quite put my finger on why that would happen. So, um, ooh, a nice little reverse. Not going to get anywhere, though. Uh, ooh, welcome to the deep dive because Drew is gone and I'll, I'll do this. I, I never I never do get to do that. Uh, it's brought to you again by our friends at Ticketmaster. Hey, maybe you're like a Jets season ticket holder and you need to sell some tickets, guys. You don't just buy tickets. You can sell them at Ticketmaster, too, if you need to get rid of them. So head on over to Ticketmaster.com slash NFL. If your team's doing horrible and you're looking to offload some tickets, maybe your team's 2-0, and about to be 2-0, and like Miami, and uh, you need to get some uh, tickets there once it cools down. Ticketmaster.com slash NFL. And, yeah, let's, let's kind of key in real quick on um, Monday Night Football doubleheader tomorrow. One bad game and then another bad game. I'm not excited really for either of these. Uh, the only exciting thing, and I did tweet this out, or I don't know what the word for it is when I do it on the BetSports app. I did bet um, the under 41 in the Cleveland game. So I'm okay. already a big CLV winner, I guess. Like, good for me there. We'll see what happens. That cash is checks, uh, I, you know that? So. Yeah, I think the weather's going to be fine, but I mean, the between the injuries, you get Deontay Johnson out now. We haven't seen, you know, we didn't see very much of anything life-wise from the Steelers' offense. The Browns' offense honestly wasn't that great either. And now we're kind of finding out that, like, you know, the Bengals did come back a little, but that wasn't a full-strength Bengals team by any means. So both of those teams are kind of on fraud watch right now, and and that total continues to drop as offensive players have gotten hurt. I don't. Did you have any looks on that prop-wise? Yeah, I have uh, two in the Brown Steelers game. I think it's going to be pretty ugly. But the the key point for me was that Cam Hay Hayward is out for the Steelers. He's like one of their best run defenders. So I bet some Nick Chubb over. I've got it like seventy five and a half. I think there's still some spots with like high seventies, eighty. I mean, he hit over that in both games against Pittsburgh last year. Just looked awesome this year without Kareem Hunt. And then Jerome Ford didn't see any touches until the game was out of hand last week. So I'm not really too worried about that. Uh, so I like that one a lot. I also bet the Kenny Pickett under. I think you laid out a pretty good case about why. You know, I mean, the, this Browns defense looked legit last week. Uh, and, you know, obviously some of it was Joe Burrow, like, you know, whatever, how, whatever we want to blame that on injury, you know, not practicing with the team, whatever. But I think the Brown defense is legit with Jim Schwartz, Jim Swart, Schwartz, there we go, Schwartz, uh, too. So all those things added up. No Deontay Johnson, like pick it under 200 yards, I think is a good look. Well, and uh, to throw more gas on that picket fire is like George Pickens had a hamstring injury in practice. Mm -hmm. Kenny just doesn't look all that good. Like they're, they're kind of banged up already. Mm -hmm. uh, they could be in for a very long night because, and I wrote this in one of the newsletters and so, I mean, somebody it was somebody else's point, but when I went back and watched the, the quick 30 on the, the Browns Bengals game, it was like, Holy shit. Like they're doing stuff they weren't doing in previous years with, I mean, even with, uh, you know, Garrett, like putting Miles Garrett inside where he was, he really hadn't played that at all. And suddenly they're doing like four or five, you know, snaps where he's an inside linebacker. And it's like, shit, I would, you know, when you come into this game as like a guard or a center, it's like, I wasn't supposed to be going up against this guy. This is <laughs> fun. Of course, he just gets a free run to the quarterback. So kind of expect him to have another decent day. That whole defense should probably feast. And yeah, I'm hoping for a very boring game. I don't know what the overlap looks like. One starts at, 6.15, the other one starts at 7.15, so kind of a goofy double overlap. But, yeah, the first one went to the second for Saints-Panthers. That total is under 40 as well. New Orleans is a three-point favorite. I don't have any any action on that at all. I don't know if the Saints are good. I saw some nice things. I saw them. They didn't finish. It was kind of the same thing with the Titans in that game. The Titans did a little better job of finishing. Obviously, got the W today. Like, I think that offense can be better than what we saw last week. 
And I mean, it, it kind of comes down to like, is Carolina a lot better with TJ Shark on the field? Because it wasn't good last week. No, it was absolutely brutal. And their their offensive line is a big question mark. We just saw the Saints just like absolutely eviscerate, you know, the Titans offensive line. So I, I think we might see more of the same here. I faded Bryce Young last week pretty hard. I didn't make any bets on this week just because it's mostly I wasn't sure whether the Titans defense was at, or the uh, Saints defense is actually legit. But I, it's kind of more of a wait and see for me because I think it's we're probably going to see, see a pretty boring game, to be honest. Yeah, it was another one of those two where it's like, well, they should have been playing you know at a decently high level that's not a good offensive line that's a secondary you should be kind of scorching and they did they just didn't finish in the red zone i think they were like one for four in the red zone to go with the you know I, I, the teams were like one for nine combined or something it was it was a really really tough hang if you had an over in that game <clears throat> so no action on that i'm not super excited for the, either of these double headers i just don't think you should overlap games on a prime time you know spot like that is dumb i mean what were they doing why do they schedule it like this it's just like i don't know they're, they're doing it next week too it's weird i, I feel weird. like they just get you know they just take as much drugs as possible before making the schedule and then just try and like you know put all the pieces together and hope that it looks i have good. like watson do it now i mean he used to be a guy with like note cards or one of those computers with punch cards now they yeah now that now they can figure it all out ahead of time um yeah i don't love the overlap so all right recap from today um, I don't know. I, I tend to forget to go in rotation numbers, so I'm just going to start with Green Bay Atlanta, where Green Bay looked pretty good for a while and then just couldn't convert a third down for the life of them. I think that's a pretty easy math problem. Like, hey, Aaron Jones was missing and Christian Watson was missing and one of your offensive linemen was missing. I thought they did a pretty good job. Probably could have won that game, and I'm not sure they should have. Atlanta deserved a better fate on some of their own drives. and In the end, that number was probably pretty close to right. I was surprised there was that many points, truthfully. Yeah, I think it could have gone either way. I mean, Ritter was like forced to pass a little bit more and I guess kind of looked better. I don't know, 7.4 yards per attempt, but just completed 9 of 32 passes. Like both of these quarterbacks, I guess like finished with reasonable stat lines, but were super inconsistent. So like it was just like a big play or a throw in the dirt or just like something. It was very, very all over the place. So I don't I know. I think second yeah. straight week with three touchdowns, no interceptions. And at the end of it, I'm like, I wasn't that impressed because of you know right. the fourth quarter where they just couldn't they couldn't get a drive sustained. So I think Green Bay might be a team that continues to get better, especially you get Watson healthy, Aaron Jones comes back. Uh, Aaron, I wasn't excited for AJ Dillon. He didn't do that bad of a job today. He could have done some. He could have done a lot worse from what I saw in like you know garbage time last week. And maybe those were just the bad plays. You don't call yeah, the good played, plays during garbage time. He looked like Fat Eddie Lacy last week. I mean, so like we're getting yeah. a guy who actually looked reasonable, which felt like a big upgrade. Yeah, I think I'm. I think it's reasonable to say they just didn't call good run plays when they were up by like four scores on the Bears. Maybe that's kind of where we're at. So I owe an apology to Dylan. Um, Vegas Buffalo. Vegas didn't have the answers today. They looked mm. decent, but that was another one where, hey, Jacoby Myers was a guy who got like 10 targets last week. He's out. Suddenly you can kind of focus in on Devontae Adams. You can focus in on, I don't know, who's left after that. And try. And then Devontae Adams ended up with a uh, concussion anyway during the game. And a couple of turnovers, and suddenly Buffalo doesn't look. I don't know if the coach, the coaching adjustment between weeks had to be, don't throw those fucking YOLO balls, Josh. And they didn't, and now the offense is fixed. They went on the road and looked really good, scored a bunch of points. It was also just like a super obvious bounce back spot, I think, after facing the Jets, who are a really stingy secondary, and then now they've got the Raiders, who were, you know, two of their corners were like bottom ten in PFF grades or whatever their two starting corners. So we knew that there was a you know pretty good matchup there. Specifically, Josh Allen completed thirty one of thirty seven passes, so you know way more efficient. Like you said, they probably focused all week. They're like, hey, you had a guy eight yards downfield. You don't need to throw it to the guy in double coverage thirty yards downfield. Like, just take the easy plays, and we'll come out of this alive. And you know they did. So that's great. Also on the Raiders side, Josh Jacobs nine carries for negative two yards. Uh, that's not going to get it done, especially when the Bills, I guess, hypothetical weakness is probably their run defense if you want to push it one way or another. Yeah, that was pretty disappointing. I didn't watch a ton of that game, um, even though I had a couple bets on it with uh, – I had Buffalo and some teasers, had them in my main 
newsletter teaser that I staked my reputation yeah. to, and it was nice. But yeah, it was solid Raiders money all week. Raiders got bet down from nine mm-hmm. and a half to like seven, like Sam's pointing out, seven in some spots. Uh, I used them in a couple teasers, easy winner, and then yeah, just that had to be like a very humbling film session for Josh Allen, where they just <laughs> like exactly what, it had to be like exactly what you just said, Connor. Hey. Hey, throw to this guy who's open and he's probably going to get like 12 yards instead of launching it to their free safety for no reason whatsoever, playing 500 alive. So I, the, the worries, I think we can put them to rest a little bit. Buffalo's still a very good team. Uh, I do have worries for Baltimore, Cincinnati. I had a tweet halfway written in my head, never fired it off. And it was like the ultimate, I'm not betting this game tweet. And I've been I've done well this year so far. I've bullet knock on one. I've had a good year betting so far, but I have been elite at like leaving a game off my card. Ooh. Like the, the three where it's like, I almost bet this, and here's three reasons why I just can't do it. Those games are like 0 and 6 over two weeks. Like I've saved so much money by not betting those games. And this was a this was an under that I really wanted to bet. And I, I really was a believer in watching the stuff back. And Joe Burrow wasn't 100 percent right. They were just not, you know, they were discombobulated on offense. And then all the injuries for the Ravens. I'm like, I can't pick a side here. I think the under is just the move. And it kind of looked all right for a while. And then you had a punt return touchdown. And then, you know, both the offenses got going a little bit in the second, ended up in the 50s. So yeah, it does feel like a win. I'm staying away from that. The quotes after the game were Burrow. The, the the you know the, it's the same calf it's probably not right right now he was limping mm-hmm. around a little so not great news for Cincinnati who also had uh, safety Nick Scott leave with concussion if you guys remember from the previews they lost their starting safeties to other teams like that was a guy they brought in you know not cold but somebody they they we're starting that they weren't starting last year and now they're down another safety here so problems. Uh, one key spot and then one spot of kind of weakness of injuries for an 0 and 2 Bengals team. Yeah, not not a great start for them at all. At all. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I think Burrow in the first half, I think he had like 80 passing yards again. I thought we were going to see like another just like complete shitter from him. Uh, but, you know, I ended up coming out with like a decent stat line, started to get it together, a couple of throws at T. Higgins at the end, played like a little bit better, but like it wasn't enough for me to think like, okay, this team's fixed. They're fine. It was just like bad couple quarters, or whatever. Like, they are still very much not okay in my mind. Uh, and then the Ravens, they're they're just growing in this new system. And so, like Lamar last week, I think looked a little bit unsettled from time to time. And then this week, took another step forward, got Mark Andrews back. You know, the offensive line is still banged up. They're missing two starters in the offensive line, and they still looked okay. So, you know, I, I think you're adding all these things together. We're going to see some awesome performances, I think, down the stretch from the Ravens passing game. It just, like, it's going to take – probably a couple more weeks still to get there fully where we see like just like a, an elite ceiling performance from Lamar in this passing game. Yeah. Munkin and Munkin said the right things between weeks where he's like, Hey, I went, I saw the tape. I saw the game. Like we, we looked really bad executing a bunch of things we need to right. do better. He's like, we have to fix those things. He wasn't just the, you know, excuse maker. So I, it's, it did look decent at times, uh, you know, on the, on the road against a, a tough divisional foe to get a win like that. That was huge for Baltimore. Who's in kind of a nice spot in the division at this point. Um, Cincinnati, Detroit, or excuse me, Seattle, Detroit. This was one too, where I feel like Seattle. Yeah. No, this was, uh, this opened like six. Mm-hmm kind of bounced around. It got as low as four and a half in a bunch of spots, kind of bounced back up, but a little two-way action. The Seattle steam at six was correct. Um, I'm not super sure if I can say like one side was just the right side. I guess anybody who was getting that many points in this game was probably the right side. These teams were not stopping anything at certain points during the game. I bet the Lions team total over that ended up being, you know, one of our, our pod plays that we did from last week and, it took a little longer than I would like, but yeah, that's neither of these teams are going to be teams that I'm going to be super excited about getting involved in unders with until we start playing some, you know, 55s or something. No, I mean, the Seahawks offensive line too is really banged up. And then we saw that in the second half of last week's game where they just like couldn't move the ball at all. And so they had a little bit more time to prepare uh, this week. And so I think that helped a lot against the Detroit defense that 
I think we all saw in the first week, like took they were supposed to take a step forward, but I don't know if that's really happened, you know? And like, I think that today was pretty apparent that it's, they're not still not very good. Uh, and then I've, it, it turned out to be a good bounce back spot here for Gino and company, 328 passing yards, two touchdowns. So a um, uh, quick other note, I mean, David Montgomery got hurt. So we might see a lot more Jameer Gibbs going forward. That would be exciting. I think he's an electric player, but they're continuing to run David Montgomery until he got acclimated. So. I, th I think he'll be fun down the road. My, my, and Montgomery looked good. Like he was yeah. good last week. He was fine today. But yeah, that quad knee. Um, I'm not 100 sure what his long term prognosis is. It doesn't sound like he's. Uh, it didn't seem good. Like he, the uh, the implication was he was going to miss some time. Which, yeah, I guess silver lining on any of that. You haven't you drafted a running back high. Like you have somebody to fill in at that spot. Like you said, Gino looked good, but. I think this Lions defense is going to keep them from winning games by margin all year, even in high total games against bad teams. I'm not going to be yep. excited about laying big numbers with, you know, with this Lions team. This defense is not sorted out whatsoever. And yes, the NFC North, I don't think won a game. Yeah, Green Bay lost. Vikings lost, lost. Packers lost. Bears obviously lost. Oh, to a, to a bad Baker, we'll get to that. Maybe fuck it, yeah. let's do that one next. I'm skipping yeah. the game. Uh, the Bears were lively a little bit at times. They had a nice drive or two. It's still just really, really bad play calling. Like calling a middle screen like that, where you're on your goal line. What do you think is going to happen? Like obviously, the worst case scenario, but like nothing good comes of that play. You're not the Chiefs. Don't do shit like that. You can't get away with stuff. You don't have the personnel. Yeah, the personnel. I'm a personality. I don't <laughs> think they have the personality either, but not not impressed with fields. And I do kind of want to blame the play calling a little, but at the same time, he needs to start to elevate as well. Yeah, no, it's it's really, really tough scenes in Chicago right now. I mean, all the all of my friends in the city and everyone, all the Bears fans here are down so bad, and I don't blame them. I mean, because everything we heard all offseason, you know, oh, the offensive line's better. Their field is getting better as a passer because they have DJ Moore and, you know, Chase Claypool, all that. He didn't know the playbook then. He'll be fine now. Like, everything that we thought was going to happen is entirely wrong. Like, 100% wrong. Fields still still can't process defenses. He's still not going through his reads. And when he does have reads to go through, they're like routes running in the same places or like, you know, a random screen in the middle of the field right by your goal line. Like, sure, it's like, I don't think Fields is, is the right guy either, but I also don't think that Getsy's giving him any help at this point. In my mind, like, I mean, there was a six and a half win total prior to this week, and I was just hammering the under because there's some winnable games, but this team, like, it's just very clear that none of the stuff and hype that we thought was going to happen actually happened. So I, I'm just, like, very much out on this team. Yeah, I remember if you are a Bears fan and you're listening to this, and hopefully you're not one of the, the turds, but, like, there were uh, – Courtney Cronin, who she used mm -hmm. to cover teams up here. Now she's a Bears beat for Athletic, maybe. Like, she said she didn't see the Bears winning 10 games on a show and just got savaged by, like, the fans. <laughs> like, like we're, we're, we're rebuilding. We're going to be so good. And they owe her apology. I just, I just remember reading that tweet thread. People were very convinced, just like, you know, Justin Fields. Did you not see Justin Fields down the stretch? He was, like, one of the most electric players. Like, uh, we led the league in offense over the last five weeks. And it's like, well, you went one and four also like he, the, the offense was coming in losing efforts or during garbage time it doesn't yeah. count it doesn't matter if you have a back-breaking interception at the end of your drive you know to like lose the game which happened in the texans game last year and then now this game this year so it's i mean it's not not happening guys yeah t t today was one of those winnable games they were within a, a score yep. late in the game baker mayfield has not looked impressive this B tampa defense has been good good enough like Baker Mayfield is clearly not ever going to be like that guy again. I don't think so to lose that game. And then to throw the exclamation point of that silly pick six in the end on top of it, that, uh, that can't feel good. And yeah, I'm going to be digging in a little on what I need to do with this bears. Uh, this price, Eddie Jackson left the, left the field on a cart. He was, uh, Oh, just blocked field goal there. I promised I wouldn't make commentary on this because it's gonna it's bad. It's not evergreen when you listen to this podcast in the morning, but uh Patriots blocked a field goal under porn, guys. Um 
No, uh, Eddie Jackson left on a cart. It was a non-contact injury, but I guess it's like his foot. So I don't know if that's like mm. Liz Frank or ankle or something. But they lost a defensive back last week to uh, Darnell Mooney. Knee injury did not look too bad. And I guess they've come out and said that wasn't too serious. So um, one yeah. injury to an already bad Bears defense isn't great, though. Uh, the The game of the week. The Chargers, Tennessee Titans, maybe not truly the game of the week, but I did have this over 45. I uh, gave it out in the, the newsletter today at 45 and a half. I still liked it. I made this like 47. What did we end up with? 51 with overtime, but we had 48 by the time we got to overtime with the tie. Chargers, Chargers, um, defense didn't look good. Should have probably gotten a lot more pressure. A bad offensive line probably should have been able to get a lot more, you know, down the field against a beat up secondary uh, that wasn't good to begin with. So I don't know. What are you doing? What are you doing in this Chargers team? They go play another bad defense next week in Minnesota. Yeah. Like hypothetically on paper, like it's another awesome matchup for them. But this was also a great matchup. And I mean, the final stats look good, but it just wasn't consistent at all. Like, they were still running the ball in situations that didn't make sense. They would have like three or four straight passes in a row that would, you know, be successful. And then they'd run the ball twice, get stuck in like a third and long, and then the Titans would get pressure and, you know, kind of work their way out of it. So I think the Chargers should have won this game pretty easily and scored significantly more than 24 points if they had passed the ball basically all game like they did in the end of the second half there. But uh, I don't know. I, I go back and forth on this team. I go back and forth on Kellen Moore. Like what – I, I was really excited about them in the beginning this year. On paper, I think they looked awesome, but I just am not sure I'm there yet with them. I mean, they should have easily beaten this Titans team. The Chargers are like that 60-foot putt you make mm -hmm. to, like, shoot, you know, 123 instead of 124, you know, out of bad. <laughs> it's like that that shot that keeps it. Yeah, that one shot, like, oh, but you remember that one really good chip I had when I go shoot, like, you know, 140 at the local mini? Because they do have a couple, like you said, at the end of the first half, they have these drives where it's like, this is what this offense can be. Yep. This is, you know, this is what we could get from this team. And then they refuse to do, you know, those things further on in the game against a team they should be doing it. So, like you said, should be a plus matchup against Minnesota. But I don't yeah. know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll get stuck with another fucking over in that one. Good luck, uh, Dan. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind it either. Also, Tannehill took five sacks in this game. Offensive line still didn't look really all that great. No. Um, but. Uh, Derrick Henry didn't get going 3.2 yards per carry. Uh, so I don't know <laughs> how they scored 27 points and then ended up winning this game is, is wild to me. Yeah, that was a, I don't, I don't see a ton for, I didn't have a ton of injury notes on that one, but yeah, Derrick Henry wasn't great. Kansas city, Jacksonville. I watched some of this game. This game kind of sucked. Totally. Sucked. Um, Lawrence just wasn't right. And obviously the chiefs weren't getting anything going. Uh, they did win the game, and you know they, they were leading and kind of in control for the second half. I don't. Did you have? I don't have a ton of thoughts on this. There weren't. There weren't a lot of takeaways other than it's like the teams just uh, didn't didn't look crisp on offense for either side. Yeah, I mean Calvin really had a quiet week, just two for thirty-two after his massive week one against the cold secondary, which I think we know at this point after CJ Stroud shredded him is terrible, uh, and then. Uh, Christian Kirk, massive bounce back week had like 11 catches, but I mean, that was my only notes is literally like they just did not look right. And that the two usage notes, I, I had nothing more, honestly. Yeah. That's one I might, cause I, I was kind of flipping around in the, on the big TV and I didn't have a ton of notes on that one cause I didn't watch it, but like the Kansas city defense with Chris Jones back obviously was going to be better. I just want to figure out, it was like, was, were they that good or was mm -hmm. it an issue? Um, 0-3 oh, in the red zone. Sometimes that happens, I guess. Um, yeah, I, I don't have a ton on this. <laughs> I just It was just like an ugly, bad game, kind of. Yeah, there'll be better games in the future. Well, good. We'll get back to that one. Indy, uh, Houston, that was like my... I couldn't believe that Indy would refuse to take money all week. I don't know. It did eventually, and then it came right back. Houston money came right back. We got – we flipped favorite. We were at Indy, minus one and a half, pushed to two, and then Houston money came back. They closed the dog again. I bet Indy straight up. Favorite favorite bet of the week. They were up by a shitload. They did it with Minshew, and, uh, you know, what we get to take from this game is, like, Stroud is great in garbage time against <laughs> – like you said, the, the Colts secondary is not good. 
No, like it can be beat. The, the, the coverage unit in general um, has very beatable elements, and especially when you're up by three scores, like uh, Stroud, Stroud is fully capable of putting 350 up in garbage time. So Houston, it's going to take some time, but they have some young weapons that might turn into something. Uh, obviously, the big injury was Richardson going out with concussion. That sucked. Like we were kind of we crowned him uh, rookie of the year at one point, and then I think he got hurt a little later. His center Ryan Kelly exited with a concussion, so those are going to be problematic if you were. Because uh... another thing I was saying too is like, oh shit, is this team live to yeah. give the Jaguars problems? I, I like kind of you know for the division. Yeah, like, I mean, Richardson looked really good, at least in my opinion, so far. And But what proves to me is that when Minshew comes in and plays relatively well is that it's probably just Shane Steichen being awesome at his job because now we've seen him command the Eagles offense, which hasn't looked as good since he left, come in and then command, you know, Anthony Richardson, who is like, by all means, an extremely raw rookie, and then crush, you know, like, be just be very efficient overall right away. Like, Minshew, yeah, Minshew comes in 19 for 23, 171 yards and a touchdown without, like, I mean, he wasn't part of the game plan. You know, he wasn't preparing all week. So it's it's just crazy to me that they were able to crush like that. And like you said, I think the Texans offensively is interesting, but they're starting with literally their entire second string offensive line. Like they had none of their starters at the beginning of the year who were out there. So, I mean, better, you know, things are better, going to be better to come. I think it's something that we need to keep in mind for maybe next year. Like when we're thinking about this Texans team, like, hey, they had no continuity up front. They had no offensive linemen. They were still finding ways to be like, okay, some games offensively. Yeah, that was, you know, Steichen's obviously a big part of that handicap when you're betting in the Colts. You gave him you, you gave him Hurts last year and what he did, and now you're giving him an even bigger dude. Right. Maybe a little less accurate, but has a huge arm and is really good on the ground, and hopefully he's healthy because that is turning into a fun offense. He had a nice connection with Pittman both games. Um Minshew, but yeah, Minshew just steps in, and then obviously the the injuries up front, that's not going to do Stroud any favors. It wasn't the scariest pass rush you're ever going to face, but DeForest Buckner's been good for the first couple of games. Like You're going to go up against tougher pass rushes over the course of the year, and if, if those guys don't get healthy, like Stroud might be another injury just waiting to happen if he's going to – it's kind of a – I mean, that's a tradition down in Houston. What was the original Carr brother? Uh, David? Remember David uh, yeah, Carr? Yeah, David that, Carr? That guy got sacked like 150 times his first two years or something. And yep. I think he so still holds it, the most sacked or like most record for most sacked in the season. I was looking it's just a red, it's a red of passage down there. <laughs> um, yeah, but good for me. Pat on the back. Indianapolis won. Nice job. Love it. Um, San Francisco Rams. I had the 49ers in a teaser from last week just because I didn't have a bet on the Jets game Monday. Okay. And I, I felt like I need something for the newsletter. I'm like, oh, I'll tease them. <laughs> and I looked and I, I, you know, basically said, well, I like Buffalo. I like Dallas. I like some of these favorites. I like some of these dogs. And I just ended up going with the Niners for the second half of that teaser. Kind of made it tough. Like, Sean yeah. McVay's a good coach. Puka Nakua, I think it might be one of those cases where if the Rams draft somebody a little further down the board and he's like an underneath kind of you know a, a shaky you know twisty twitchy slot guy yeah. you just have to be like this guy might end up being good we can't we can't doubt their scouting staff anymore because uh, puka naku is like full-on legit and their offense isn't too bad even without really you know going with running backs at all no the i mean makers I... thing makes no sense like, just like he had to have done something like they just told him to fuck off for the game well, I just thought the narrative around him was so funny because, like, after last year, he had obviously that stretch down the year where he was, where he was so good, and everyone's like, "Oh, he's gonna be awesome again." They use him down the stretch so much. It's like, well, yeah, maybe, but like they also benched him for like Ronnie Rivers and Daryl Henderson, and like he was actually gonna get benched for K Kieran Williams in the first game, but then Kieran Williams oh, yeah. got injured on special teams, like in the first game of last season, so they couldn't even play him. So yeah, Cam Akers is gone forever. But I mean, my question to you is like, do you think that the Rams are like frisky? I mean, because. I, I was kind of writing them off because it was basically just like a felt like a three man team with Donald Stafford and cup and a terrible offensive line, a bad defense starting like a bunch of like rookies. Uh, I'm, but I, I, they're proving me wrong big time here. So, I mean, any thoughts on the Rams? So they, they do get, you know, they got to head to Cincinnati, but if Burrow is hurt or God forsake missing and it's Trevor Simeon, 
Like yeah. that's a defense. Like I just said, they had a safety get injured. That's a defense they can continue. Mm-hmm. I don't think they're going to do this with their defense. Like that was just a shit performance from Gino. Yeah. Like, their defense isn't going to keep him in games. It's, it's going to be this offense continuing to do what they do. McVay calling these plays and getting the most out of the guys they have. And, you can do that on the road in the Bengals. You can. That's a Monday night game. You have an extra Plus day six. to prepare. You have a better coach, uh, and then you get the Colts on the road after that. That's another secondary you can Winnable. beat. Uh, Eagles come to town. That's kind of where the rubber meets the road. If they're lively in that game, you know it, they could be. You know they could be three and one, and it'd be like, well, you know, it's the Colts. Maybe it's Minshew starting. Who knows where right. with the concussion? Maybe you know. Maybe they just beat Trevor Simeon and Gardner Minshew, and they're three and one, and we're not taking it seriously. Like the the Eagles Rams game on October eighth will be a, a real good bellwether, I guess. But it's yeah, it's, I don't know if you guys got the seven and a half. God bless you. I still don't understand why you would ever kick that field goal. Um, <laughs> that was crazy. I mean, what what were they doing? Like, what did? How much did he have on the spread? I don't know. Like. If you, even if you took seven and, and you got a good number on the Niners, like I'd have been pissed about that push. Oh, that man. was uh, that was something. That was unique. Uh, Purdy, Purdy looked a little shook at times, but yep. he still he still pulled it together when he needed to. He has enough. Just has so many weapons. I mean, CMC had like eighty rushing yards in the first quarter, and they just uh, kind of pick pick which tank we want to go out and roll with it at any given point. And you're going to, I mean, Debo had that touchdown. Ayuk is good. Ayuk was shook up, but I'm, uh, I think the update was that one wasn't too serious. It was a shoulder injury that limited some Shanny's Shanny after the game said he didn't think it was too serious. Um, He's a big part of that offense. So if he's out, that actually might hurt him despite having all those other guys. Um, Giants Arizona. I don't know what the fuck to say about that game, dude. I was worried about the Giants fans. Like we, people weren't going to show up to work tomorrow, man. Like that's because there's some people like their whole personality is like being a fan of a football team, mm-hmm. and like the people who are fans of the Giants, they were in a dark place at halftime, man. It was sixty nothing at that point, and it's one thing to be like, okay, the Cowboys are a truck. That offense is good. Right, they have all these weapons. CD Lamb is basically Cooper Cup, man. He's so good, <laughs> and I mean they they have all these weapons. They they wrecked us, but to go get that done to you by Josh Dobbs was like the third string quarterback in Cleveland six weeks ago. Like what what is going on? What it is? You know that that defense played hard last week again for Arizona, but that offense shouldn't be doing that to you. So the, I guess good for them to come back, but still a lot of problems. Yeah, it's just 76 total yards in the first half, down 20 to zero at halftime. Came back, scored four straight touchdowns, and then a fifth score, uh, you know, right after to win the game. They had like 350 yards in the second half. I don't know what Dable said to him in the second half or what he did, but uh, it looked obviously a lot better uh, in the second half there. And then their defense kind of got it together as well because that was. I mean, that was just terrible. I, I like couldn't believe what I was seeing. Like basically everything is I don't this Cardinals team is not good, but they've played two now frisky games, uh, you know, like right away off the bat, but against again the commanders and the giants. So everything needs context. Yeah, the Giants one of the concerns coming in obviously was gonna be is there a wide receiver that's gonna step up? The other big one was the offensive line. And through two games, like the offensive line is getting a pretty failing grade right now. So yeah, like that's you've played one good team you've played one bad team but there's gonna be a lot of issues if that offensive line can't get it together at some point um speaking of those very dallas cowboys they probably could have scored more points oh yeah they they left some i'd like to see what the cowboys were in the red zone i feel like they left points on the board that's uh one of those teams that's going to be lively to score 40 every week. I get it wasn't the best of opponents. Zach Wilson threw a bunch of picks, but man, even, even then like 30 feels light for what, what, uh, what I saw from that team. I'm guessing only 382 yards. I guess they, they started some of those drives and plus positions, but six red zone possessions for the team only converted on two of them. Don't do that during good. uh, Don't do that versus good team guys, but other than that, like Dak looked really good. 31 of 38. Like he was really um efficient and he still threw a pick six that you know was dropped. 
Yeah. Like that was that was such a bad throw. <laughs> and like so you're still gonna get a little of that from Dak where he makes a bad decision once in a while, but lucky on that one. And yeah, they I mean they trucked the Jets. This is one of my favorite teaser legs as well. C D Lamb is maybe live for offensive player of the year if he keeps getting in the end zone. If he can, you know, just continue to have these games. I mean, how many how many targets do you think he has? I didn't check this. Um, this week or had. He had yeah, well, he had like I think it was double like, digit, right? Yeah, like fifteen. I mean, he had like 11, 11 catches, thirteen, there. eleven catches and thirteen targets, no yeah. scores, but one hundred and forty three yards. One hundred and forty three yards usually has a guy with like a seventy yard touchdown. His long mm-hmm. was 31. Like he just he does it by volume, guys, and he's so good. I guess it makes sense though, because the Jets are like a team that you can beat a little bit more from the slot than the outside, because this the outside you'll get, you know, one of their good uh outside corners there. So I guess that kind of makes a little bit of sense if he was rotating in the slot, but it just seemed like they were just absolutely clicking offensively. Zach yeah. Wilson. A lot good. of his stuff, yeah, like you said, a lot of his stuff was underneath or yeah. you know, or across the middle, but he did have a few, you know, boundary catches. Mm-hmm. They weren't deep. But he had a couple that were, you know, like th- that first down catch that was like, you know, third and 17. He's standing there 18 yards down the field on like some stick route that he just stops and he's wide open. So very, very good. CD Lamb, good. Zach Wilson, bad. I'm sure <laughs> sports radio in New York won't overreact to not signing a guy this week. They should definitely maybe consider getting some. Like, who, I'm though? still, I'm who still would the they band- sign? I'm still on the bandwagon of like, you're not going to sign anyone that's going to make you a Super Bowl team even with this defense even with these players like wait for Rodgers to come back next year run it back don't waste your draft pick draft somebody to help fill in in a spot get Rodgers back next year win your Super Bowl next year because you aren't fixing it like now so yeah, I mean like what do you know. do like Wentz Matt Ryan I mean well, that, that's what I'm saying there's nobody out like, there that's like yeah gonna take you you'd have to you would have to acquire one of these dream scenarios where like somebody trades you cousins or I don't know is Kyler Murray expendable now that we have Josh Dobbs <laughs> 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 I like Josh Dobbs he, he he's a he gives you more than you think you're gonna get I liked him in preseason I just didn't think he was gonna be starting games this soon no, me neither. It's uh, here he is. I mean, he's played all right. He's been fun. Oh, uh, last one, Washington, Denver. Didn't watch a lot of that, but I was scoreboard watching. And what the fuck happened there? Did you watch any of that game? Yeah, I watched. Uh, so the first half was a little bit boring. The uh, Broncos took a little bit of a lead, and then the you know the Commanders kind of came back uh, and then took like like just had a, went on an insane scoring run. We're up like two scores there. And then Russell Wilson, you know, started throwing his moon balls over to Marvin Mims a couple of times. So we hit him like a couple of times there, which is good to see. He was, you know, had a little bit of a breakout party after playing behind little Jordan Humphrey last week. So that was good to get Marvin Mims on the field. But overall, like, I think that Howell took a little bit to settle in in the beginning, but then wound up with almost 300 yards. I'm a little worried about this Broncos defense. Like, I feel like, I kind of thought they were going to be pretty good coming into the season and have now just allowed 35 points to the commanders and uh, we're not very good against the Raiders either. Like Jimmy G has completed like 20 of 26 passes last week and was really relatively efficient, even though they didn't score a ton, they were, you know, solid offensively. So I don't know, maybe that's too much of an overreaction to Washington, but I guess I just like need to downgrade them a little bit uh, overall, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, that's one of mine that's on the list to go back and watch, especially because it had a car, kind of a crazy ending. But it looks you know, like like Howell was just kind of dead in that first half. And then the Did fact nothing. that he was able to ramp it up against what I expect to be a much better defense. And, I mean, that's something we said about Washington in preseason. They have the weapons around them. Mm-hmm. Like If Howell plays good, it can be a good team. So maybe that's what we're gonna get it was nice to see russell wilson play decent like i just yeah. it's cringy and as much of a doofus as he is like i hate to see a great player like that just fall off a cliff because it was bad at times last year so we just Hopefully need more maybe. we need more like good and like quarterback playing in the nfl like at this point we're just getting oh, so exactly. many so many shitters out there like people were just like they just have no chance like they just can't execute what needs to be done yeah, no, and that's the thing too. Like, good quarterbacks make good football. And I don't like watching shitty football. Yeah. So, like, 
watch it like the Bears Tampa Bay game. I want less of that. I want more of you know. It's funny that we had a seventeen to nine game in Mahomes and Mahomes and <laughs> right. Lawrence too. Sometimes these things happen, but I want good quarterbacks. Uh, yeah, I'll go back and take a look at that, and then yeah, I do need to remind you guys before we get into. Next week's lines, we'll take a look at those real quick, the ones that are currently up. That You know what? More memories are made when you're there for live NFL action. And when you need tickets, I'm waiting to see if, if we get this first down. Oh, we got a flag on the play. Ticketmaster's got you covered as the official marketplace of the NFL. Kind of put a little commercial inside the commercial. Ticketmaster gives you more ways to find that perfect seat with their interactive seat map and the 360-degree previews of your section. Make sure you get the best view of all them pivotal plays. And if your plans change, like you should have last week for the Giants game because it was raining, Ticketmaster gives you more flexibility to sell and transfer your tickets, plus the mobile tickets make getting in on game day a breeze. Find your tickets today at Ticketmaster.com slash NFL. Look at headlines. The New York Giants are 10-point dogs to the Niners. You know what? This is a good chance for me to pull up my lines. Uh, I make it. I have not made. So these are going to be raw numbers All right. from last week. I'm going to be using my week two numbers with no adjustments into week three. I make it 11.8. I don't know if I'm going to possibly give the Giants a slight upgrade for playing halfway decent. And the Niners maybe a downgrade for the, the defense actually looking a little beatable, but I'm probably pretty much on market. That total right now is 45 yep. clues. If you want to bet into that total market, have at it. I'm not all about it. No, that's uh, – I mean, I think it seems about right, honestly. I, I wouldn't wouldn't have guessed, guessed anything different here. Um, the total specifically, uh, I would probably lean over, honestly, just because I think that the Niners can probably put up some serious damage on the Giants themselves. But uh, – yeah, that would be about it. Oh, Patriots got a touchdown. Bullshit penalty. Oh, we're going for two, he says. All right, at this point, I might be fading my halftime plays and hoping that the Patriots <laughs> can get back within three. <laughs> we need we need them to just win the game now. All right, real quick. Um, Tennessee is a four-point dog to Cleveland on the road. 41 and a half. I don't think those numbers are actually up. I'm just looking at the screen right now. That might be one that's not up because Cleveland has not played yet. Although it's up, it's up at some places. 41 and a half minus four. I'm not super sure. I'm seeing four and a half at circa potentially if that's live. I don't know. An unabated show yeah, I'm, live. I'm, but... I'm at a book right now that has it up. So minus four, 41 and a half. <laughs> I think that might be a little too much to, yeah. to be laying if you're Cleveland. Three and I'm a half per- sounds about right, depending on how tomorrow pretty- goes. Pretty much on market with that. That total being 41 and a half kind of checks out with the, the defense playing well and Cleveland's offense not being good. But maybe uh, kind of watch that total after we see what we get Monday night. Detroit, Atlanta total is only 47 for a bad Detroit defense. I'd wonder if that sees some action on the way up. Detroit is favored by four and a half after falling today. Four and a half point favorites against an undefeated team coming to town. Boy, howdy. Boy, it howdy. seems like a lot of points. I think uh, one of our guys at 4-4, Sharp Clark, uh, had a play on this uh, right before the show. So a little preview there, some of his picks. He was on an absolute heater on week one. So um, wouldn't put it past him, but I, I got to read his write-up here. Because I, but I would probably lean towards Atlanta as well. Yeah, looking at my pricing, again, I'm pretty close, but I would lean towards Atlanta just based on what kind of matchup they could get versus Detroit. Um, New Orleans, Green Bay. That one is Green Bay, two and a half, 43. I'm showing value on New Orleans in that spot. I know I did back Green Bay week one. Part of that was just a strong disagreement with the Bears price and maybe a little lower. This is a number that's going to move based on probably information this week. If we get good news on Aaron Jones and Christian Watson, this might end up crossing up over the three. Um, if we get bad news, you might see people grabbing that Saints money line or great Saints plus two and a half. So kind of probably just a wait and see information market. Although currently I would be betting Saints on the road. Uh, maybe just yeah. a teaser for me there. 
Probably. That's probably a better look. I mean, I don't know. I feel like we're learning about this Packers team that they're probably against most teams. They're probably not going to put it like a ton of teams away. Like, you know what I mean? Outside of like maybe the bears, but um, I don't know. I, they don't see yeah, me as a team that's going to like put up crazy numbers offensively. I mean, it was at soldier field, but that was, I mean, you beat a pretty bad team and that yeah. score wasn't super indicative of actually what happened. Uh, this Miami team, this is probably off the board right now because Miami's playing. I've yeah. seen, I think, so look ahead would have been Miami, Miami six and a half and like a, a 45 with Denver. Denver's defense is kind of disappointed. Miami might be able to score. That's a home game. Denver has to go down to Miami. That one might see some action to the. I like Miami at six there. That was one yeah, of my notes. That one might see some action to the hosts. Miami might if that opens Miami Man six. We'll have to see what that opens after we get through with this game. Uh Chargers Vikings. Like we said, the Chargers have a good uh a good matchup, I suppose. That totals up to 52. There's places that opened that on the look ahead last week. Under 50, I believe. I know some wow. people in the Discord hit that. Uh 52 maybe might even still be a little low. You might see some more action to that over. Well, it's a it's a Minnesota defense that really stinks out loud. And if the Chargers want to get the the plays right, like they can absolutely take advantage of that secondary. You get a uh, you know a very aggressive Flores defense like that. If you can finally try to hit something deep, I think you could score a lot of points in Minnesota. So wouldn't yeah, be surprised bike. to see that uh, titch up towards fifty three. I guess. Yeah, I like I lean that over as well. Also, we've seen the basically the Vikings just like give up on the running game essentially, or just like know that they're only going to use it whenever they need like three yards and nothing else. So it's just basically that, and then just pass the ball every single play, which is not a bad option honestly, considering you have Jordan Addison, Justin Jefferson, T.J. Hawkinson, and Kirk Cousins is you know mostly competent, I would say for the most part. So the guy had forty five hundred yards last year. It's like, yeah, <laughs> like we, we want to shit on this guy, but he he was. He was very much above average. So it'll be in that is oh, Donaldson beat me to the point. That is the most interesting thing is if the Vikings start 0 and 3 after a 13 win season where I, you know, I, I know this defense isn't, isn't very good, but this offense has some weapons. If they start 0 and 3, I wonder what happens there. You can't fire your DC. Like you just brought him in. You're that, that's a long term, like, hey, we need Flores to fix this over the next couple of years. And you don't really have an offensive coordinator that you can fire because O'Connell calls the plays. So I don't know like who the scapegoat is if they start 0-3. It also doesn't really get that much better. So you have them at the chart. Oh, it's not the... a great, yeah, it's not a great schedule. No, it's like the Panthers, obviously, I think is a very winnable game, but it's on the road. Then they host the Chiefs, then they get the Bears on the road. Okay. And then they have to face the Niners. So it's like, I mean, they're definitely, I would say, most likely losing to the Chiefs and Niners here. So, you know, ideally they win all the next the other three, but I mean, they could very easily lose, lose at least one other one of those, maybe two. So, yeah. and that's the thing, too. It's still the NFC. It's still a path very much to, I mean, nobody's running away with this division. I mean, they could still win this division oh, yeah. at this point. And, you know, the wild card is very much alive still. Uh, Tua threw a Josh Allen ball there. Whoopsies. Um, these New England Patriots look ahead was like minus two facing the Jets at home. I'm guessing that ticks up the the Garrett Wilson injury turned out to be just getting the wind knocked out of him is what yeah. the report is. He went to the medical tent, which I, I mean, has he never gotten the wind knocked out of him before? Why did he go to like he went to like the locker room? Does right? anyone remember the first time they got the wind knocked out of him? Oh yeah, it's pretty scary, but like I. Because nobody like sits you down and like has this kind of hey someday you're gonna fall off the you know the monkey bars and you're gonna be worried that you're dying because you can't breathe like yeah. when it happens it is scary as an adult you should know what it is but right like, like he's played football long enough like you should know it, what happened it still sucks like it still very much sucks I'd want to go just lay down in the tent and like be alone with my thoughts as well so um yeah this is uh. This is a game that maybe doesn't open at Patriots minus one and a half. Like this look ahead, even with this performance, you know, at home, with the way the Jets played today, the way Zach Wilson played today, I'd probably open that minus three. Yep. Yeah. Even on the road. That game. That total. That total. It's thirty-eight in the look ahead. That's probably a good number. That's not going to be a very high number. Um, I might get bet down if you open that any higher. 
Buffalo, a six and a half point favorite on the road. Let's see if I have that one up live because, again, I'm just looking at the screen. Beefalo, Beefalo, where are you? Do we have, oh, we have double Monday night again. All right, Buffalo minus six and a half over to Washington, over 46 for the total. Mm. Commanders were lively in that second half, and Buffalo can definitely be taken. I wonder why this total isn't a touch higher. I'd probably make this 47. I think I might bet one, guys. Yeah, it's not good turf. Over, Maybe everyone gets hurt, but I think I'm gonna bet a. I think I'm gonna bet a game here. Sometimes I do this on a. There's a 45 and a half. Oh, that's available nice. Available, Chris, and I'm gonna bet a bet a steak on that. Not, not a literal like meat steak. <laughs> I kind of thought that's what you meant for a second. Not gonna lie. I don't know what's happening. Sometimes Chris gets a little weird. Like it, it logs you out. And you need to double log back in. I'll figure that out. Fan Ginkle is a problem, guys. <laughs> Um, yeah, not sure if they cover that. That's kind of a big number. I would guess if I looked at my numbers, even with, you know, I didn't downgrade Buffalo, but I make that five and a half. So I would show some value in Washington and the over in that one. I think their offense is going to be plenty frisky at home. If Howell can get his shit together, like he did in the second half, uh, Houston going to Jacksonville as a big old dog. Massive. We have a nine and a half, nine at some places, nine kind of shaded to the to the nine and a half side, over 44 and a half. Yeah, Stroud had a lot of passing yards, but it was against kind of a bad secondary. This Jaguars defense isn't anything to write home about. No. But they showed up a little bit today, so <sighs> that's too big of a number, even for Houston. Yeah, Pinnacle is showing a 10, at least on the odd screen. So, I mean, if you get a 10, I think that's an interesting look. Raw numbers from last week for me make this 9.2. So I'm, I guess I'm kind of on market. Um, I wonder if this total, uh, total is probably about right. Like I said, I don't have a very high rating on this Jacksonville defense. They, if they don't give up points, they'll give up garbage points. Yeah. Um, against a, a team fully willing to keep the foot on the gas, even if they're down by a bunch. Um, where does that leave me? Baltimore Indy, another big spread. Baltimore, eight-point favorites over the Colts. I'm guessing that might not be up on some boards because of uncertainty at the quarterback. Mm -hmm. What are you looking at? Where, what, uh, you should be looking at FanDuel. That's the official sports book of the Deep Dive <laughs> podcast. But wherever you're looking is fine. Do you have a lineup for that? Uh, oh, yeah, shit, well, I do too. Yeah, eight. eight and a half on FanDuel. Uh, eight at Circa. Eight and a half bookmaker, Penny. Um I wonder I if they're just saying the difference between a rookie and throwing Minshew in there is not that big of a difference, and we're fine with this. No, I mean, I, I, I think they'll eight. And, I still kind of like eight and a half. I'm not going to lie, but I do think that Baltimore probably has a field day. Maybe this is their ceiling game, like they're kind of coming out game, and Lamar throws for like three fifty and three touchdowns. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I think that Indy could probably keep it close here against Baltimore. Eight and a half. What do you? What are your numbers saying? So and and take that in mind. I my numbers said I showed value on Indianapolis this week, and I bet them. Okay. And I make this. I make the Baltimore game a nine point game. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to go back and look at uh, exactly what I'm gonna do with some of these numbers for the Baltimore's defense, because that's right. You know that that's what would keep them in the game if if Richardson or God for sake Minshew is able to you know move on this defense. You're not covering that number even yeah. if it is like the ceiling game for the offense. So I'm going to revisit that one, but I'm not super excited about my numbers telling me I should be betting an eight-point spread right off the bat here. Carolina, Seattle, getting towards the end here. Four and a half, Seattle favored. I make this three and a half, um, total 42 and a half. I don't know. I haven't seen – enough out of Carolina because I've only watched one game. I'm not super excited to talk about this one until we... What's the total you saw? Yeah. Um, total 42 and a half. Hmm. I, I think that Carolina's front might give Seattle a couple, a little bit of problems here, um, but their secondary might not, considering they're already ba beat up, so uh, it's a tough game to handicap, honestly. Yeah, we just we haven't seen Carolina play their second game yet. It's really tough to say we're getting it from this offense. If that offense shows up um, on Monday, 
I guess I, I'd expect this total to take a little bit of action to the over because they scored 10 points in their first game. That offense was really rough looking. Oh, yeah. And I know, I know Atlanta made some nice additions, you know, in the secondary and up front, but that airs that Atlanta defense is not elite by any means. So to go and only put up 10 points like that, isn't, uh, isn't going to get you the stamp of approval from the betting market with your offense. If it showed some yeah. sign to life, maybe we see that 42 and a half get hit a little bit. Um, Dallas, Arizona, Dallas is a massive 12 and a half point road favorite. They said, we don't give a shit if you scored 28 on the giants, the Dallas Cowboys are still that much better. I make this 12.3. Ooh, look at me. I'm pretty much on market, I guess. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, that was uh, that's Kansas City, Chicago. I just looked for a, a big number. I make it 11. Excuse me. Okay. So I'm a little bullish on Arizona. And truth be told, if you made me bet that one. <sighs> Gun to head. Take, what are you betting? I, I would just take it over. Yeah. That's probably. Like, that's I, probably I don't care how lively that, that defense is. Mm-hmm. Like the Cowboys offense is probably extra lively enough to to get me over a 43 and a half shaded a little bit to the under so kind of sitting between some of those goofy key numbers you have in the low 40s mm-hmm. not excited to bet that one at all um so speaking of some chiefs bears is 12 and a half as well and like <laughs> i said my my numbers make it chiefs minus 12 and a half i think if you want to back the chiefs in this one maybe you just take the team total over it's a bounce black week against a beat up team. Like we mentioned uh, earlier, Eddie Jackson was carted off. So they're down a defensive back and it's just one more week of healthy Kelsey in practice and getting this offense. Right. So the, the bears haven't really shown me anything that they've taken any growth from last year. And I'm probably going to downgrade them a slight bit on the defense after this week. So I'm probably right on market and, happy to this is a secondary teaser zone if you get like Ooh. a if you get like a 12 because a 12 to 6 you cross the 10 and the 7 it's not uh the greatest i don't mind my wife at all used, my wife used the chiefs and survivor today she does not understand what survivor is or <laughs> like watch football so she picked tampa bay last week because she thought it was funny that the vikings were playing them and then she picked the chiefs this week because um, when the email came up, she was driving past KFC <laughs> and she couldn't get KFC out of her head. So she picked Casey. Oh, so that was, man. that's her strategy. But <laughs> so if you guys are out in survivor, you should feel bad because that's how some of these people are still in or picking them. <laughs> I went, I just, uh, I went Cowboys cause I don't care. I'm going to be out in three weeks anyway. I don't save teams. Yeah, I mean, are you talking about like our Bettsburg survivor pool? I mean, we yeah. Can't, we can't oh, really man. win that shit anyway. So, you know. I'm going to talk. I think if I win, I can just talk Reed into giving me like cash value under the table. <laughs> yeah, right. Like we have a Super Bowl contest we did, and then no and one wins. And then we not just, only, uh, yeah, not only Circa, but obviously ours as well. Big chunks of people were in, um, were in on the Giants. I mean, that was one of the most popular survivor picks. I thought we were going to get Carnage. It would have been mm-hmm. like 20% of our pool. I'm not sure what the percentage was in Circa, but that would have been, uh, that would have been nice. If uh, a bunch of people could have gone missing, I I don't usually make it to week two. I always take the Colts. Like, I'm just <laughs> always out early for taking the Colts. Yeah, one of these like fishy teams, like favored by a lot against a bad team, like always ends up losing in the first few weeks. And we haven't had that yet. Like Washington last week would have been it. Uh, maybe the Giants this week. Just like any team against the Cardinals, the Cardinals are going to win a game that they're not supposed to. I'm just not sure when it's going to be. Oh man, I thought. Yeah, I really thought it was today. I. I Gannon's done a better job than I thought, but at the same time, he got kind of conservative. Like, you can't right. get conservative if you're a shitty team ever. Like, you should not. It's like, oh, man, this might be the game that costs us, you know, and we don't go to the Super Bowl. No, dude, you're the Cardinals. Like, stay aggressive. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, three more quick games. Pittsburgh, Las Vegas. Pittsburgh hasn't played yet this week. Um, I don't have a good read on him. No, uh, Vegas with Devontae Adams and concussion protocol or whatever. I, I haven't, uh, I haven't got the updates on that, but if you have your top two receivers out, I can't imagine even a bad Pittsburgh performance sees Vegas opening as a home favorite after we get a Monday night game. You can't be down two stud receivers and still open a road favorite against a team that, you know, was expected to be at least a middle of the pack team here in, in Pittsburgh, even after a disappointing week one. I make that, and granted, these numbers aren't going to be 
I make Vegas a two point favorite, but that's no adjustment for Devante. Uh, Philly, Tampa. Maybe six you should guess this one. Six and a half. Yeah, six and a half. I'm, I make it a six. Um, Philly has extra rest. Tampa's not great. If there ever was a case, I don't like betting road favorites of any size. But if there ever was a case, I I don't think Tampa Bay is any good on offense. And they've been the beneficiary of playing two really bad defenses now. Like yeah. There's going to be a game where, where Baker just looks horrid and – if this pass rush is able to get after it here, I think uh, I think it could be kind of a nightmare game for him finally, even though it is a road game for Philadelphia. Yeah, I mean, that's that's one of those goofy, fishy ones for sure where people are going to talk themselves into taking the the value on Tampa Bay getting that many points at home. But whew. Yeah. yeah Philly, I mean, Philly's defense hasn't really looked as good as they were last year, I don't think. But at the same time, they're still definitely significantly better than like the Bears and the Vikings, which is who the Tampa Bay's offense is playing. They've looked pretty good against. So I, I, I get your point there. And also the Eagles offense should be pretty successful there. I, I don't know. I could see this actually moving towards six, to be honest here uh, on the road. I could, I could see that, to be honest. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I think like there's going to be interest in taking Tampa Bay. Yeah. And – Christ, I might be if that gets you know if that gets bet down, I might be the buyback in there at a, a cheaper mm-hmm. road favorite, which is not again not my favorite thing to bet, but I uh, kind of like the Eagles in that spot. The Rams and Cincinnati close it out. That is the other Monday night game. The Eagles Philly is a Monday night game, so that's the other part. There's not a lot of spots where a team gets a Thursday to Monday. Like Philly is basically getting a buy. They get eleven days between games. It's such a long, that's such a long rest spot. Um, all right, Rams, Bengals, Bengals are six point favorites over the Rams. I haven't updated my Rams number. But I would lean. I would lean Rams here at six and a half. Um, yeah, I only make Bengals. it four. I make it four point seven without making an adjustment for Burrow. So is that yeah. up right now? I'm seeing FanDuel six and a half, circa six, but that's just on the odd screen. I see a six and a half. No, excuse me, that's Tampa Bay. It's down at some places. All right, I'm going to make a small bet on Los Angeles plus six. Love it. A stake. I, I still have Dolphins over nine and a half, minus 150 in the QMs, but that just now, I don't think they would let me. That, that has come and gone, guys. <laughs> All right, Rams plus six is my other bet that I'm making. And that's it for the look-aheads. I don't know if you guys have anything else on those, on the early numbers and the look-aheads. Hit us in the Discord. Go check out Connor's Discord. There's free channels over there on 4 for 4s as well. You can go just rap about football if you want, guys. You should uh, – we'll drop a link. We'll drop a link to that Discord in the in the show notes on this too as well as uh, just a link to check out some of the articles on 4 for 4. Just yeah. make it Come all in. work for Dan. Yeah, make more work for Dan. You know, come hang. Uh, got some prize picks channels that are free too. We've just been raking on those, you know, kind of random websites here and there, but it's been a good time. There's there's money to be made on like prize picks and shit, guys. Like, uh, don't don't just degen those every Thursday, Monday, Sunday. Yeah. Like for but like sometimes there is some there's some bad lines on those, so take advantage. So appreciate Connor for popping in taking time out of a Sunday here. If you're listening to this on Monday morning, please leave a review and tell Connor what a good job he did on the YouTube or the Spotify or the Stitcher or whatever the hell you're listening to on your podcast, the Podbean. Remember that? That was a thing. Is that a thing? If you're in the YouTube, there's still a pert near 100 of you. Please hit the thumbs up on the way out. Have a good night. Enjoy your evening and good luck this week. Oh, this this way you don't have to stitch in the closing music. Alright, let me know later.